What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode two of the Future DDS podcast. Tyler, Nick, Terrell here again for another episode. We actually have a really special episode for us. We have a really big win on the team right now. You know, as, as we know, you know, this is a, a dental inspired podcast and we always love to celebrate these victories. Uh, everyone who gets it in, but we have someone, one of our members, our team members, our brothers, Nick has actually been accepted to dental school, man. So, you know, congrats, clap up for him for that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, we want to take a moment, just allow Nick to, to kind of reflect on this journey a little bit. And obviously let us know, where did you decide to go, Nick? Where are you going next year yeah. for, for dental school, man? Uh, I will be attending Columbia University's College of Dental Medicine. That's huge, bro. That's crazy. Thank you. Thank you. And I uh, obviously I can't, you know, continue without saying thank you to you guys because, you know, this wasn't a journey I did by myself. Everyone was involved. And, uh, you know, you guys played a big part by being great mentors, giving me this opportunity just to be a part of this team and interview so many dental students and just get their perspective and learn how to get into dental school. So again, you know, thank you guys, really. Appreciate oh, you guys. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. But not about us, man. It's not thank about you, us. It's about yeah, you, you did man. the work, bro. It's, like, yeah, it's all yours, yeah, it, man. <laughs> no, no. And we want to know, I mean, so of course you had a lot of different options, right? So like, yeah. and, and you know, off camera, off, off record, we've talked about, you know, the different options that you had. So what kind of led you to make the final decision? Because you almost picked another school. I don't know if yeah. you want to share that, but... Yeah. You know, what, what made you choose Columbia? Yeah, well, I guess I can start off with, like, discussing what schools I was deciding between. So it was between Columbia and UCSF. And believe it or not, um, I was leaning heavily towards UCSF for, like, the longest time like, because it made the most sense. And I'll get into that. So, you know, I'm from the Bay Area, born and raised. Uh, you know, my family lives here. I have all my friends here. You know, I used to do research at UCSF, so I knew a lot of people there. And uh, so, you know, financially, it also made sense. It's like almost 200K cheaper than Columbia. So, you know, everything was pointing towards UCSF. So, you know, why why did I choose Columbia, right? So first off, I had been working towards Columbia for, I think, two years now. Like, it's literally what got me through the DAT. Like I, I would have dreams about like, I'm not even like, not even figuratively. Like I would literally have dreams about attending Columbia. And, you know, I was just thinking like, it's just too good of an opportunity. You get to live in New York, you get to attend medical school, which is like, is, is like perfect for what I want to do. Cause I want to do OMFS. That's right. And, uh, you know, so like they have every specialty, they have all like, opportunities including research community outreach um you know like asda and whatnot and then um yeah i just i i just felt like if i didn't choose columbia i would always think what if and like maybe have some regrets and you know i i didn't want to even take that risk and for the money you know like columbia has such a impressive track record when it comes to matching to omfs that you know if i can maybe guarantee matching my first year out like that oral surgery salary would just make up for that price difference right away and uh, you know even in 10 years of being an oral surgeon I don't think that 200k is really going to play a difference um so yeah and just you know I think being away from my family and friends like it's also a good thing I'll be able to grow like really be on my own feet for like the first time in my life and, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people talk about the, like, the clinical focus in Columbia, like, as if there's not enough clinical focus. Um, but, you know, I've spoken to dental students there, and I learned that they just don't have requirements for you to do so many, like, like, procedures, which, you know, that's a great thing, because I think that's up to the student to decide how much time they want to allocate towards that, or how much time they want to allocate towards research, shadowing, like all that stuff, you know? So that's the one thing I really appreciate about Columbia was that you, you know, you have a lot of control over your schedule and what you want to do and what fits you best. And just to top it all off, they have this culture of just like focusing on learning and not passing exams. Whereas some schools kind of had that, like, 
question banks from previous years and pass the exam. So, I mean, the, not Columbia, other schools. And so, um, yeah, just all, all those factors in the end, it just, it just made sense to go to Columbia. No, no, no. I, mean, I, think that, I mean, bro, have you been dreaming about yeah. something <laughs> for the last couple of years, bro? I think that at some point you really just got to follow your heart. And I mean, if that's, if that's at Columbia, then great, you know, and like you said, the money, the money will come, you know, it's, Life is to be lived, man. And, and that 200000 absolutely, it's a lot of money for you to take on. But, I mean, look, if this is where you want to be, if this is where you need to be, then you're absolutely making the right decision, you know. And so I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even fret on that. You know, I know we talk a lot about, um, you know, the $500,000 debt that, you know, we're, I mean, I'll, talk, I'll say personally, I'm not sure how much Terrell's in, but, you know. Yeah, that, it's, it's around there, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of money, but, you know, I think that if your heart is in the right place, everything will work out, you know? So, yeah. so no, we are we are super proud of you, man, because we've seen yeah. from the from the beginning, and it's crazy. The, the title, the head, the story is crazy from, from community <laughs> college to Ivy League school. Like, that is an amazing story, and so you definitely should be yeah. applauded, man. So thank just- you, thank you. And, you know, something that I just wanted to add for the audience out there was um, – so I had kind of been debating between UCSF and Columbia for the longest, like for even before I got accepted, like right after my interviews, I started thinking about, okay, where can I see myself going? And so it was always between UCSF and Columbia. And I, like I said, I was leaning towards UCSF for literally like two months until literally last week. So basically one week before submitting my deposit to just confirm my spot. So just, you know, it wasn't as clear. I think a lot of people, they used to say like, yeah, I just, I knew, like, I felt it as soon as I was on campus. Like, I need, this is my place. I didn't really feel that, to be honest. Like, I, I thought every school had its, um like, had its faults. Like, no school was perfect. But you just have to be mindful of what your goals are. You know, even though school might be very good in one domain, it might not suit your goals. And so if it doesn't, then... I, I don't see why you would go there, you know, like just to satisfy everyone else, everyone else's desires. So like, yeah, I just want to say like, it wasn't an easy decision. It's, it's still not. Um, but it just it, like, I listened to my heart at one point. I was like, one point I just could hear it, like, like it just kept saying Columbia. So yeah. Yeah. No, without a doubt. I think, um, I think that's a great point you make of, um, you know, picking the place that's right for you. And, you know, Tyler and I, we talked about that a lot of, you know, pre dance while we were in dental school, even asked us, like, why we chose Tufts, why, you know, what are some of the things that, like, they should think about when they're deciding the school. And you hit, you know, you hit the nail on the head of, of like, what will serve you? You know, you being able to get away from home for a little while, you being able to, you know, forcing yourself into a position where you ha- you're forced to be independent. That's something that serves you, especially right now, where as though, you know, that's something that everyone needs to think about, you know, just this is just for more so the listeners of people that are going through making that decision right now or thinking about dental school, like, you know, yeah, of course, like you said, you may have to pay extra to go to a certain school to live in a certain city or to be in a certain environment, but what are the benefits and the pros of being in that environment? You know, you could probably go to a smaller school where you may get a scholarship, but are you going to be able to learn those things? Are you going to be able to build the connections? Are you going to be able to build those relationships? Um, are you even going to have outlets to do the things that you like to do outside of the dentistry? You know, dentistry is a part of who we are and who you'll, you know, being a dentist is part of who you'll grow to be. Uh, obviously, oil surgeon, you know, I'll speak that into existence, but, you know, but it's not everything. So continuing to grow, continue to be able to feed into your hobbies, into your interests, into your likes, being in New York, being on the other side of the world and really being able to grow into who you're, you know, you essentially will become as a, as a doctor and, you know, obviously as a man and as a person, I think that's a huge point and something that shouldn't necessarily be glossed over by anybody out there that's listening and kind of thinking to your point, like more so of the, the clinical aspects. How many crowns are they doing? Like, honestly, you'll do more crowns in the first six months of being in dental school than you'll do or being out of dental school than you'll do in if you went to dental school probably for 10 years. You know, like just be based off of the, the system behind dental school in itself. Um but yeah, I think, yeah, again, man, just congrats on that. And I think that obviously you put a lot of time, effort, and energy into 
making that decision, obviously, you know, moving so far away from home and everything. So um, yeah. best of luck to you, bro. You know, we're, we're here to, to help you out throughout um, throughout the way, man. But I just I just want to throw it back on you, like, of, of questions of, like, what are some things that are kind of, I guess, making you anxious or may, or things that are kind of crossing your mind now that you've made that decision to make it into Columbia? Like, what are some of the things that you're worried about or maybe – are starting to start, starting to look more into now that you're you're making those steps forward. Yeah, you know, I think it's more just like mentally preparing for what to expect. So, first off, like you know, there's that kind of anxiety, like, oh, who's in my class, right? I haven't met my classmates yet, and I'm like, I'm gonna spend the next four years with these guys. So I better, mm-hmm. I hope to God, like you know, I click with some of them at least, like that yeah. we become, become good friends. And then, like, you know, the, the housing situation is still a little bit ambiguous. I don't know if I want to live on campus. I want to live in my, like, an apartment off campus or, um, yeah, or, like, you know, I like I said, I want to do OMFS. Like, should I start studying for CBSC or is that unnecessary? Because, you know, I was looking at it and I'm like, dude, I don't, I, like, none of this material even, like, makes sense to me. It's, like, way more of an advanced version of biology than I've ever seen before so I'm like should I wait till school or should I just deal with it and kind of deal with like that that struggle right now rather than wait till school so those three things mainly I see got you yeah um yeah I mean those are those are some heavy topics you know those are a lot of things (laughs) that should be on your mind obviously um I think and, and you know we kind of talked about this off camera a bit but even in terms of living um and kind of being able to connect with your classmates man i think that's one of the biggest experiences that i know for sure personally and i know tyler talks about all the time like that's one of the biggest things we miss about the experience of being in dental school is is struggling through those test blocks struggling through learning a class two prep and struggling you know just just learning these things and being able to build those relationships because those are the things that you'll for sure remember once you're done you're not necessarily going to remember every night that you stay up studying but you'll remember the you know you'll you'll remember those connections that you make and those relationships that you build through that process so um you know that's just i I think that would be something to think about in terms of looking for a place to stay and and tapping in with some of those people i'm sure y'all have like a facebook group or instagram group or something of for your class go in there start start deeming some people or at least just seeing who who's there who's going to be there and and start kind of build your tribe, man. Building your tribe is going to be a huge, huge aspect of being successful through dental school. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to, to to hear the see the journey and continue to hear the stories. Hey, we got to have you guys come over to the city and have like a little bit of a future DDS <laughs> reunion, or maybe even like a future DDS. What do you call it? Um, like a little event for all pre dance de- dental students. Yeah, everyone, everyone a part of the community. I feel like that's such a like big hub you know i feel like a lot of people are there and we, we can make something happen yeah, absolutely new york is is amazing so we'll definitely be up there last quick question man last quick question so what is what are you going to do now you know for the next what five six months like what's your yeah. game plan before you start school yeah so you know my whole philosophy has been for the past four years i've been whether I like it or not, been spending like six hours a day, like doing school or whatever, you know, extracurriculars, you know, now it's been, it's cooled off. I'm not in school. I don't have too many extracurriculars, so I can kind of do whatever I love, but like, I want to put that same energy and focus that I put in for school into the stuff I love. So, you know, right now, um, you know, I decided I really want to learn jujitsu and obviously I can't learn it all in six months. No way. But like, I love like, like if I go every day or like four or five times a week, I feel like I can progress so much. And if I put in that same level of focus, because it's a, it's truly like, uh, you know, it's, it's its own skill. Like you can study it and like, it's like chess and, and yoga and like wrestling, everything like combined into one. So it's such a like complex sport. And so that's what, that's what I love about it. Like you can, you can really like study the game and, and like, like learn, like use that same concepts that I've used for, for like studying towards, towards jujitsu. Cause you don't learn, you don't remember all the moves after one time doing it. You have to use spaced repetition and, and like, uh, like, I don't know what other, like recall and stuff like that. Like that's, 
that's what I love about it. It's just like school, but just a physical form of it, like physical education, if you will. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've, been <laughs> um, I've been doing a lot of reading, you know, like now I can put more time into like reading and I'm, I'm trying to like do some of the classics that we went over in high school and like that I kind of neglected back then. Like I really want to f- learn them this time. And uh and then just also spending time with my family because, you know, like I'm not going to be with them all the time anymore. So yeah, I just, I'm trying to cherish this moment. And then hopefully a little bit towards the spring, I'll do some traveling, go visit my family in Sweden and Spain. And that's kind of it. I want to do a summer research fellowship too for Columbia. So, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily be starting in August. I'd be starting, I think, June or July-ish. So, yeah, those are my plans for now. Oh man, you, you have a packed schedule, man, but and we're excited yeah. to continue <laughs> to see what you got going on, man. Because I mean, even the, just the jujitsu is crazy. Like, yeah, let alone. It, I'm inspired. I mean, so, I'm inspired to go do more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's an awesome culture. I'm telling you, like, everyone there wants to learn. Like, everyone is there to improve themselves. Even people who have been doing it for eight, 10 years plus, like, they're, they, everyone wants to learn. And the cool thing is, those who know more than the, the like the beginners, like they're, they're so willing to teach. Like it's such a respectful environment. Like, you know, everyone comes in, everyone dabs each other up in the beginning. Like, so everyone feels included. It's just a, it's just such an amazing community, really. Like, so I would, I would highly recommend it to anyone who's interested. Hey man, I, maybe. <laughs> maybe <laughs> one day. Yeah. No, maybe. you're wrong. It has its it has some like like downsides to it too, but like I just feel like the benefits outweigh them. So that's why I do it. That's all that matters, man. There's always gonna be something, right? Exactly. No. No. Right. But anyway, um no, we'll definitely of course keep the audience updated on your, your progression through this uh latent phase of whatever, you know, yeah. before you get into school, but um or before you start school. And uh yeah, man, I guess that's that's it for this podcast, right? Well, before we wrap it up, I just had a well, I wanted to throw that question back at you. Is is there anything I'm missing from these from this little gap year, gap half year? Like what should I do maybe that I didn't mention or not do? Um I would make sure make sure you get your rest. Like you said, like do the things that you want to do now. Um mm-hmm. one thing I would say is obviously you have a lot of free time so you can you pretty much have a lot of free time to build your schedule how you want to but start building like a routine a routine that you feel like will serve you in dental school maybe have to, you obviously have to tweak it a bit um uh, but if you start getting into the habit now it'll be that much easier for you to have for you to make that transition or that conversion back into school mode instead of just you know completely living free for six seven months and then next thing you know you're like oh man like you you're gonna have to hit the ground running as soon as you get to dental school. So you know, and it's, it's most likely gonna be the hardest school you've had, obviously. Um, so just start building up that system. Um, start like taking classes during times you know you you may be able to take classes even when school. So maybe like evening classes, just get your body used to that, or really early morning classes, so that you know like okay, I I won't have to sacrifice this or the hobbies or these other things in order to continue to prosper and do well. Uh, at the school because that's that's the main thing um yeah I think I think that's that would probably be my biggest advice and if you could like find a little like part-time gig to just have some extra spending cash because you know you get loans you know you, I'm sure your family will help you out a bit here and there like different things like that but it's nothing like having just some extra safe money for if you do need a weekend out or Man, I'm stressed right now. I gotta. I want to get back to Cali for you know a couple of days and just see the family, especially because you will be so far. Like those tickets aren't as cheap as a lot of people, or they won't be as as easy for you to get back. So I think those are like two big things I would I would say focus on. Yeah, those are all good points. I feel like definitely. Um, I I think getting into routine is the most important because like you want to, and also just keeping your mind sharp, right? Like I'm not trying to like like become like lazy or like or like get out of that habit of like like or make like making my memory weaker for example like that would yep. suck like I go into their med school and just like have horrible memories so I have to build that up again like I mm-hmm. I understand what you mean like I think it would be good just to keep myself sharp and uh, you know ready 
Yep. You know, I like Terrell said habits. And I mean, honestly, bro, like I saw the way you were studying before and for the DAT. I would just try to keep or learn how to keep that same level of intensity. But of course, you know, bringing it in just a little bit. Because I remember you were studying. Um, but, you know, you had a very interesting study schedule the way you were doing it. Yeah. So yeah. I actually, I would actually kind of mimic that because you found what works for you. Yeah. Um, and I think just really, really like, even if you're writing that down and saying like, hey, look, this is what I'm going to try. Because when you get there, there's going to be people telling you all the different ways of studying, blah, 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 or how they do it. They might say, hey, I study all night long and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, bro, you need to get solidified in your habits, your routine, like you said, um, and really just really try to stick to that, bro, because um, you cannot run somebody else's race in dental school. And that's I think that's going to be something that you quickly, quickly learn. Like the way you do something is not the way everybody's going to do it. And the way everybody else does it is not the way you're going to do it. So just keep that in mind. I would I would also say like really, really take some time to, and you've already done this to a certain extent, but like really get to know who Nick is, you know, like really get your own personality because for the next, you know, hopefully nine years, you know, you'll, you'll still be a student. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so you want to make sure you have your identity, even though primarily people will realistically look at you as Nick, the future oral surgeon. Right. So yeah, just take some time, talk to yourself, be alone, you know, um, yeah. that's crazy. As that For sounds. Oh, yeah. Everyone needs that. Everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and just get ready, man. Cause it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun uh, decade. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm excited. <laughs> it's crazy to think like if I look a decade back, I was in middle school. So I'm like thinking about like the growth that's going to come in the next 10 years. It's going to be like unfathomable. Yeah, you are going to be. I mean, I already know you as a person, you are going to be much better. And I think it goes on to that whole compounding interest of like habits and things of that nature. Right. If you get point zero one percent better every day, exponentially you rise. But what you also have to recognize is that if you're if you're taxing your body, if you're taxing your mind and you're doing that over 10 years, then you can also hit a decline. And then you'll look out 10 years from now and be like, what did I do all this for? So but you already know these things, man. You know, we have faith in you. We know you're going to be good, man. I know, but it's always good to reinforce it, I feel like, because, again, it's all about mindfulness, you know, like, that's something I've learned. Like, you may know it, you may know it if someone says it to you, but, like, that doesn't mean you were mindful of it and you were thinking of it all the time, mm -hmm. buying it, you know? So I think it's always good to bring these concepts back up, for sure. This is a, this is a great podcast, and, of course, anybody who, who has any questions for Nick, please feel free to reach out to him, um, either on our uh, Instagram or, of course, his Instagram um, you all know that we are here to help you achieve y'all's dreams of becoming dentists. So, of course, um, whatever you all need help with, we're here for you. Yeah. Yep. All, right. all right. Now, that's going to wrap up this week's podcast. We will be back next week, next Thursday, for episode three. Um, just stay tuned. Like I said, we're going to stay consistent. Just bring you this new content uh, as well. as Check out the DSC videos for all you pre dance out there looking to get into school every Mondays and Wednesday. Um, that's going to be it, man. All right. All right, Tom. All right, Nick. All right, See man. You later. Thanks, guys. See you later. Appreciate y'all.